Hello everyone. Welcome to Dento Media YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be discussing further on the properties of dental amalgam. So let's get started. And don't forget to like, share and comment on this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So beginning with the first property of dental amalgam, that is the dimensional change. The earliest amalgams exhibited expansion while setting. This was because of greater mercury to alloy ratio used. Amalgams may expand or contract depending upon its manipulation. Excessive contraction can lead to micro leakage, sensitivity and secondary caries. And excessive expansion can produce pressure on the pulp and post-operative sensitivity. Now the theories of dimensional change. So let's talk of contraction first. Small amount of contraction occurs in the first half an hour after trituration because mercury diffuses into the silver and tin and the mix starts getting dissolved in the mercury. The expansion will be the gamma 1 crystals as they grow. They start impinging upon one another and they produce an outward pressure tending to oppose the contraction. If there is sufficient mercury present to provide a plastic matrix, an expansion will occur. Therefore, reducing mercury in the mix will favor contraction. According to American Dental Association specification number one, dimensional change should be limited to 20 microns per centimeter measured between 5 minutes and 24 hours after trituration. So the factors which will be favorable in uh, making the mass in contraction that will be low mercury to alloy ratio, higher condensation pressure which squeezes out the excess mercury. Smaller particles, they are going to consume more mercury because of increased surface area and more trituration that is going to accelerate the setting. Now coming on to mercuroscopic expansion. The term mercuroscopic expansion was given by Jorgensen. Initially, there is volumetric contraction due to reduction in the volume of various elements. But with time, what happens? Crystallization of various phases occurs which leads to expansion due to impinging of crystals over each other. Now, the corrosion of amalgam leads to mercury release from the gamma 2 phase, that is the tin mercury phase which re-reacts with the unreacted gamma phase that is the silver tin phase causing further expansion. And this term is known as mercuroscopic expansion. Now the causes of mercuroscopic expansion can be increased mercury to alloy ratio, failure to squeeze out excess mercury or inadequate condensation pressure. Now, what will be the consequences of microscopic expansion? It results in shabby edges forming small unsupported ledges of amalgam which can be broken off during function. The amalgam gives a very untidy and shabby appearance. And also amalgam protrudes from the space and this chemical stress leads to increase in the creep values. Now moving on to the next expansion that is the delayed expansion which is very very important. Delayed expansion basically occurs in zinc containing alloys. They may be zinc containing low copper or high copper when it is contaminated by moisture during trituration or condensation a large expansion can take place. It usually starts after 3 to 5 days. And it can continue up to months and can reach values greater than 400 micrometer. That is greater than 4%. So this is known as delayed expansion or secondary expansion. Known as delayed because it starts 3 to 5 days later. It is caused by the release of hydrogen gas from the reaction of zinc with water. 
so the chemical reaction is going to be with zinc and water forming zinc oxide and liberation of hydrogen gas and this hydrogen gas does not combine with amalgam but it starts collecting within the restoration creating extreme internal pressure and expansion of the mass that causes the protrusion of the restoration out of the cavity increased creep increased micro leakage pitted surfaces and corrosion so point to be noted here moisture contamination after the cavity has been filled does not cause delayed expansion once you have condensed the amalgam into the cavity and after that if it is moisture contaminated that is not going to lead to delayed expansion that is only during when you are manipulating the alloy when you are manipulating the amalgam non zinc alloys they do not show this type of expansion when contaminated with water however moisture contamination of the mix of any alloy results in inferior physical properties that means during manipulation of amalgam or working with amalgam requires stringent protocols to be followed uh, uh, when it comes to control of moisture proper rubber dam application proper isolation of the operating field proper cotton rolls in place there should be no moisture contamination we can use high wax suctions uh, so that we can have a good isolation of the operating field the next property will be uh, that i'm going to discuss is micro leakage micro leakage is basically the penetration of fluids and debris around the margins that can cause secondary caries dental amalgam has an exceptionally fine record of clinical performance because of its tendency to minimize micro leakage or marginal leakage micro leakage occurs when there is 2 to 20 microns wide gap between the amalgam and the tooth structure now amalgam has a very good property of self sealing the small amount of leakage which occurs under the amalgam restoration is quite unique if the restoration is properly inserted it is properly condensed leakage is going to decrease as the restoration ages in the mouth because of the formation of corrosion products in the tooth restoration interface and over the period of time these corrosion products are going to seal the interface and reduce the leakage so amalgam is a self sealing restoration both high copper and low copper amalgams are capable of sealing against micro leakage but the accumulation of corrosion products is slower with high copper alloys because we know that corrosion phase is mainly the gamma 2 phase which is eliminated in the high copper alloys so it takes more of a, a more time uh, for the corrosion products to accumulate and that self sealing property to come up now uh, there are certain factors which are responsible for micro leakage in amalgam micro leakage can be attributed if poor condensation techniques are followed which leads to voids marginal voids lack of corrosion by products which are necessary for the sealing of margins high coefficient of thermal expansion of amalgam use of single composition spherical alloys they show more leakage than lath cut or admixed alloys now the micro leakage can lead to pulpal inflammation and uh, that inflammation because of that bacteria can pass into the marginal gap causing pulpal inflammation tooth discoloration normally we call it as amalgam blues and amalgam hues uh, which we see with time and post operative sensitivity the dentinal fluid can come off uh, it can come out of the marginal gap causing pain and sensitivity the next property of amalgam is strength strength of amalgam develops slowly it takes 24 hours to reach to the maximum value in the first star only 40 to 60% of its maximum compressive strength is achieved and according to the american dental association specification number 1 amalgam should have minimum 1 hour compressive strength 
of 11,600 PSI that is up to 80 megapascal. So in the given table we see that if we talk of uh, hourly strength that is higher for single composition 262 megapascal and after 7 days also it is 510 megapascal. Moving on to the next property that is tensile strength. Amalgam cannot withstand high tensile or bending stresses and it will fracture. In improperly designed restoration, the tooth and the restoration is going to move apart. It's going to break apart. So to avoid this, 90 degree butt joint is required at the margins. The tensile strength values of low copper alloys is 60 megapascal. For admixed, it's 48 and for single composition, it is 64 megapascal. Now the factors affecting strength. What all factors are going to decide the strength of amalgam? Effect of rate of hardening. Amalgams do not gain strength as rapidly as might be desired. After 20 minutes, compressive strength may be only 6% in, as compared to the 1 week strength. So ISO specification stipulates a minimum of 100 megapascal at 1 hour and 350 megapascal after 24 hours. Since the initial strength of amalgam is low, patients should be cautioned not to bite too hard for at least 8 hours after placement. The time at which at least 70% of its strength is gained. You have to give a post-operative instruction to the patient not to chew, not to bite from that side because the amalgam has not gained its strength. The one hour compressive strength of high copper single composition amalgam is exceptionally high. That is 262 megapascal. So the chances of accidental fracture is less. Now the effect of trituration, either under trituration or over trituration, both of them are going to decrease the strength for low copper and high copper amalgams. Effect of mercury content. In sufficient mercury, it will produce a dry granular mix. It's a dull mix which is prone to corrosion. Excess mercury, it is going to produce a marked reduction in strength because of higher gamma 2 content. Effect of condensation. Higher condensation pressure is going to result in high compressive strength, but that's valid for lath cut alloys. Porosity, voids and porosities definitely are going to reduce the strength and effect of cavity design as I've mentioned, if it's not a butt joint, that tooth and the amalgam interface is going to break apart. The cavity should be designed such as to reduce the tensile stresses. The resistance form, the retention form that should be followed uh, if we want to reduce the tensile stresses upon the restoration. Amalgam has strength in bulk, so the cavity should have adequate depth, it should have an adequate width. The next property which is again very important is creep. Creep is defined as time dependent plastic deformation of amalgam. Creep of dental amalgam is a slow, progressive, permanent deformation of the set amalgam which occurs under constant stress, that is static creep. Static creep is when the deformation is occurring under constant stresses and intermittent stress will lead to dynamic creep. So there are two creeps, static and dynamic. Creep is related to the marginal breakdown of low copper amalgams. The higher the creep, the higher is the degree of marginal deterioration. By ADA specification number 1, creep is limited to 3% in set amalgam. Creep occurs near the melting temperature of the material. In amalgam, creep occurs mainly because gamma 1 is a fine-grained structure in which particles slide over each other resulting in slipping of the grain boundaries. So creep value if we discuss that is low copper lathe cut amalgam has 6%, low copper spherical alloys have 1.5%, high copper admixed amalgam has 0.5% and the lowest creep values is for high copper unicomposition amalgam that is 0.05 to 0.09%. Now what all are the factors affecting creep? Definitely the low copper alloys they have higher creep values than high copper alloys. 
residual mercury will be directly proportional to creep more the mercury more is the creep increased condensation pressure that will reduce the creep because increased condensation reduces residual mercury level marginal areas they show more creep because they have high levels of residual mercury at the margins and delay between trituration and condensation is also going to increase creep that means you have triturated the mix the mix is ready but you are not condensing into the cavity that is again going to result in creep retention of amalgam amalgam does not adhere to the tooth surface it the retention depends upon the cavity design retention of amalgam filling is obtained through mechanical locking but now we have recent advances like we have bonded amalgams through which the amalgam bonds with the tooth surface thermal conductivity because of good thermal conductivity amalgam can transmit temperature changes readily to the pulp so closeness to the pulp should be avoided without adequate pulp protection that will depend upon remaining dentine thickness rdt according to the values you have to decide that whether varnish is sufficient whether we need a base or whether we need a liner and a base combination to protect the pulp now the coefficient of thermal expansion is 3 times more than that of dentine and this difference is responsible for micro leakage the last property is tarnish and corrosion tarnish and corrosion is basically because of the black silver sulfide which is formed on the surface of amalgam in some patients it is seen both high copper and low copper amalgams they show corrosion but corrosion in higher copper amalgams is limited and because we know the eta phase that is less susceptible factors related to excess tarnish and corrosion again the tarnish and corrosion can be attributed if there is higher mercury content if the surface texture we have exposed voids scratches contact of dissimilar metals like gold and amalgam that is going to lead to galvanic shock a galvanic uh, current is going to flow and that is going to lead to tarnish and corrosion patients on a higher sulfur diet moisture contamination during condensation corrosion can be reduced if we polish the restoration we smoothen out the restoration if we have used the correct mercury to alloy ratio following the aims technique and proper manipulation and uh, also if dissimilar metals are avoided including mixing of high and low copper amalgams that should also be avoided if we want to avoid tarnish and corrosion so that's all for the properties of amalgam hope you like this video do comment like and share your comments how was it and don't forget to subscribe to our channel dentomy 3